Hey guys, are you curious about LECA and semi-hydroponics or maybe thinking about putting your Sansevierias into LECA, into semi-hydroponics? Well, if you are, this is part two. This whole series, in case you missed the introduction, is it's spring and springtime is a time to clean out your closets, redo your plant lighting, do plant lighting, um, change out dirt, all of that kind of thing. So spring is a great time to choose LECA and semi-hydroponics for your plants. Um, now, I wanna show you this one. This one was from Ikea and I have it, this pot, this plastic pot is from Target. I believe it was a dollar. And then inside I have it in a nursery pot. All of my setups, this has been my least favorite because there is space. So this nest in here, but this there's a little space at the bottom. So there, there can be water in the bottom of this that's not touching this. I, I don't know, I just don't like that. So, um, and then I, I'm guessing it's so much black and I don't have holes. I, I have no idea what's going on. So let's check on what's going on inside of this one. Okay, so here we go. You can see the variations of roots. There's orange roots and there's white roots. So the white roots are new growth. The orange roots are my older growth. When I feel the roots, hmm, they're damp, not wet. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is pour out the LECA. Hmm. Huh, I mean, it's not over the top with those roots, huh? Just okay. All right, so let's see. All right, so. When I pour out the LECA, it's damp. No, I'm not stopping wet, but it is, it is damp. And when LECA's damp, it's going to be a little darker color. And then these are the rotted roots. So probably what I should have done, and this is a lesson for everyone, is two to four weeks into this, I probably should have checked it. Now, at that time, I'm learning, and as I'm learning, I'm sharing with you, but at that time, when I planted this one, I didn't know the rule about planting it lower in the pot. So, again, this one was kind of high in the pot, so those roots are kind of having to work a little bit harder, the, trend, the water kind of coming up the pebbles. I don't know, I think there's something to that. The other thing I wanted to tell y'all is see these holes in the bottom. If you're not comfortable, let's say you're using pumice or something with, that's smaller in diameter, you can nest another nursery pot inside and twist, and then the holes, you can kind of control the holes in the bottom a little bit better. But I'll do it in a little bit. I'll go ahead and spray the roots with hydrogen peroxide first. The reason I use hydrogen peroxide is it kills fungus, mold, spores, eggs, anything that came home with your plant, I like to spray the, the roots with hydrogen peroxide. And if I am about to use a nursery pot, I always spray it with hydrogen peroxide. Now, this plant is quite large on the top and hefty. So if you use the hydrogen perfectly round like a balls, it's not gonna stand up, it's not gonna be stable. I need to use, um, and I'll link it down below, I'll use a generic LECA that I get from Amazon. It's $35 for a 40 liter bag, and not like any water down in the middle or down in here. If you water these, try to bottom water. Next, you always wanna go down one pot size, two, sometimes even three pot sizes. You're gauging not by the top part, but by the roots and the bottom part. So I will go down a couple of pot sizes and I will probably use volcanic pumice to stabilize it as well. This is the pot I'm gonna use. It's a little nursery pot. This is an outside pot I'm gonna use just to give it some nice stabilization. If you really keep this compact, um, this is a huge plant to put in this tiny pot. 
it will do better and it will start growing roots out the bottom a lot faster, um, making it a more satisfying experience. And then I just have a mix. Wait, like I can't see the bottom of the pot, but if I took away a couple of pieces, I can. That's how little the Leka is, which I highlighted on another show. And so it's stable. See how it's stable? Now this plant, any anytime you have a Sansevieria, you run water through the, lo the, the rocks and then don't water it. Wait one week, you're gonna run water through the rocks, don't water it. Um, you're gonna do that three or four weeks. Uh, since it's spring, we can go ahead and do that and then after about a month to six weeks, leave a little bit of nutrient water in the bottom. It kind of shocks it a little bit when you do everything I just did. I want to say, isn't that pretty? I think that's so pretty. I want to say that um, when I clean this off, it actually had some rot on it and it had, it needed to be attended to. Now that it's like this, um, even if when roots start growing out the bottom, and they will because it's so uh, compact, um, this is good for about a year. Uh, it'll fill up with roots and, and get tremendous growth. It likes this like tight kind of environment. Yes, it's so pretty. Okay, so yesterday, if you didn't watch, I'll link it above. I did Sins of Various Part 1, and today is part two of Sins of Various in semi-hydroponics in LECA, and uh, I showed all of the Sins of Various I own, and then I had one that was in trouble. Slept on it, I decided the one that was in trouble, the roots are actually pretty salvageable. When you cut the roots, um, I brought some. So this is a rotting root or a piece of rotten root and see how dark it is. When you cut it and it's white on the inside, the rot stops. So it rotted and it stops. So what I did was I sprayed all the roots with um, hydrogen peroxide, let that dry, sprayed them with Super Thrive, kind of, you know, let that dry. And then um, any of the stalks that were soft and mushy, so like this one, I actually planted it, but then I realized that it's not the texture I want at this base part. I don't see any rotting in the stem itself. It's just a soft, mushy-ish type of consistency. It has wrinkles. I don't think it's gonna make it. So I picked the ones that I thought would do well um, and we're still pretty firm and actually okay. There's some that broke off and I'm gonna cut them and put them down in water. They will root. If I put Super Thrive in there and maybe a pothos, they will root twice as fast. So that's what I'm gonna do with those. Now yesterday I forgot to talk about the benefits of Sansevieria in your home. And I wanna talk more specifically about watering. So in the winter, don't think about it. In the winter, water once a month. Because I, I named a couple of times. So in the winter, once a month, whether it's in dirt or semi-hydroponics. In the summer, I find um, every two weeks is a good, stop, stop. Let me get my sprayer. Oh, you would think after you spray a cat a couple of times, they would be like, oh, maybe the plants are a good idea. Not this one, he sure is cute though. Okay, so fix on watering. Um, this plant right here, every two weeks, um, and then probably in the summer because now it has water roots, it's gonna be once a week. I have it in a very sunny window, um, and that's the other part. If you have your sense of area in a dark corner, it might still be once a month on the watering, even in the summertime. The sunnier the area, the more. I like this thing, because look how long it is. I can reach you all the way over there. Names are snake plant, mother-in-law's tongue. Um, I didn't kind of talk about that yesterday. And the last thing I wanted to say is, Sensevarias are one of the plants that NASA releasing oxygen while you're sleeping. Some plants kind of go 
quiet while you're sleeping and snake plants, mother-in-law's tongue actually don't. Um, so if you have a few in your bedroom, it is an air purifier. You don't need to buy expensive air purifiers. When this plant is taking, uh, and it's through the leaves and the, it's the whole plant, it will take formaldehyde, toxins. If your workspace is kind of stuffy and thick, um, you can just put a couple cents of areas by your desk. If you put them in a self-watering pot or in LECA, it's just so easy. I love how God made the plants to help humans. And isn't that incredible that this plant that does well in low light, high light, medium light, neglected, um, is actually purifying the air and does well inside. Okay, great, so time for lighting. Let's talk a little bit about lighting. And the reason I wanna talk about this is because I have a tendency to put sansevierias in dark corners of rooms where I want a plant and then I don't wanna think about it. Water it once a month, okay. So the only thing about that is they actually do need a little bit of light and some of the spots I've put them in have zero light, like zero sunshine, no windows, nothing. And so this probably won't work in the bathroom, but I wanted to show y'all what I found at Ikea, Hema, H-E-M-M-A, and um, it's a cord, a light cord, and it's quite long, and a bulb holder. Ah! Okay, and then just take all these stickers and stuff off. It's really cool for thrifting. Um, I, I'm gonna show y'all, I'm gonna do install one and kind of show you the thought process, but it has a really cute on off button that's really low by the floor. I always put plant lights on timers and I will link my timer down below. They come in white and black. Um, and then they have, um, and I'll put the picture above. This is, it looks like just paper. It kind of is just paper. Uh, this was one of the Hemas, the, uh, you can buy different lampshades to go with it. I'm so excited about this. Um, so this is this one. String the cord through. And it's nice and long. I love that you can pick the cord color because sometimes I want white on a wall and sometimes I want black. Now this particular one, you're just going to um, crinkle. So let's see. Let's crinkle the paper down, and then I like to twist a little bit, and I'm going to make a flower. And just see that, and I'm just going to keep going, and then. All I do is I just put a plant bulb in there. I absolutely love it. Okay, so this is a four pack of bulbs. I will link them down below. Okay, so I'm up here. It, this is the kind of the ugliest spot in my house. Don't tell anyone I said that, but it has three doors, one, two, one behind me, no windows, and it's just kind of this ugly juncture. However, it has, a space, this one little corner. And right now I have this and a basket in this corner. Now, the light I had before and the reason I'm changing, I never come up here, so I actually don't care that much. I had this cute little kind of punk light from Home Goods, um, but the light bulb was really dominant and I think the light fixture itself is going out, so I thought, oh, it's time to change. The cool thing I like about these is it, the plug, this is on like above your your kind of outlet thing, and so you plug in your, your light, but then that plug below is not interfered with by this thing, um, and they're $5.99. I love them. Okay, so this is ready. This one is so cute. Are you kidding me? This is from Ikea and it had giant ones. So for this space, I am going to, and then on this one I got the black cord. Now, the way I'm gonna hang these, and I wanted to talk about it, but I won't get my drill out in front of you, it's rather embarrassing, um, is I use a plant hanger to hang them. So 
a plant hanger just comes straight out like nine or ten inches depending on how big your light fixture is and then I just hang this on there now on this one I am gonna have I'm gonna snake this around the plant hanger and have it coming down the wall. However, because the bell is so large, um, it will snake, like part of the snake will be like behind the basket. Now on this particular unit, you want this light thing to hang kind of at this second thing. Okay, good. So you can see my plant and I want to kind of strategically hang that above this plant. So um, I'm gonna play with it and I'm not gonna bore y'all with the details, but I'm gonna go ahead and play with it and kind of install my plant hanger and all that stuff. And then I'll probably tape a little of the process and then see y'all after. y'all enjoyed that I'll put a couple of pictures of the lighting at the very end after the outro thank y'all so much for hanging in there I am trying to put as much information as I can in each episode so if you're not subscribed definitely subscribe comment down below if you have any like cool lighting suggestions love you see you tomorrow